by building the black pearl and it mostly features the exterior or the top layer of planking but there's quite a bit more in this episode so uh, let me show you how I got to this point. Early on I mentioned that I was using dark mahogany stain and that I would put a few coats, minimally two, and this is the second coat and this may be dark enough. I said that uh, it would have an almost black appearance and that's what I was going for. So let me get into the details as far as what I accomplished in the last uh, couple weeks anyway. Work on lighting, work on the captain's quarters in the back. You can see some of the, the window details that I've uh, completed. So stay tuned for details on this build. I've uh, given the first attempt at sanding and I pretty much have everything pretty smooth and level. There's a few little cracks and crevices around. There's one spot over on this side, which you're not, it doesn't matter. You're not, you'll not be able to see it on camera. There's a little dip right here. So I'm going to try and put the mud on and fill these cracks. I got out several different things to try and I think it's going to come down to these two plastic ones. This is just a, a plastic rewards card from AutoZone. And because I can bend it, I think that's the best bet. This is my first attempt at mudding a major ship, as I recall. I might have done one in the past, but not this quality. So you can see I, I pretty much wiped a lot of it off and put it on thin, but it did fill in the cracks. You might not be able to see, but probably could have used a little bit more mud back here, but I'm going to let this dry and I'll sand it and see if I think the planks will go on. I just did this side. I don't think I need any down here. This is smooth. The planks will all cover up these joints, so it's nice and smooth. This side I've not done yet. So you can kind of see the difference between the two. I want this as smooth as possible so the planks can attach. So when this dries, I'll go back and do a, a soft sanding, probably by hand. The mudding went pretty well, and I've sanded it. I sanded it by hand. I also used like 600 grit on a uh, like orbital sander. But I've got everything pretty smooth. I'm not really concerned about little bitty cracks like that because it's smooth that the other planks will go right over it. This area did turn out pretty well. I was able to give a gradual curve on both sides, no, no lumps. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And I was going to go ahead and uh, put my coat of stain on, but there was one little dip right there. So I filled that in, going to let that dry, and then I'll... I'll put a coat of stain on this and then once that dries I can start the final layer of planking. I have the sanding done and I did put one coat of stain on. That's all that will be required. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is light or brown. I just want it to be a little darker. But you can see how the, the inexpensive wood does not hold the stain like the walnut does. Looks like the instructions use this line as your first plank and then you work down all the way to the bottom and then obviously you can work up from there. So that gives you somewhat of a straight line but it's also still has an arch to it. So I expect the, the planking is going to be a challenge but uh, I do need to get that done before I can do anything else. I've been thinking about the planking and how I want it to look and I need to do the back first so that it ends flush and this can cover the edge of it. So the side can cover over the edge of the back so it looks proper from the side. So that's where I'm going to start. I've got the planks attached to the back of the ship. Now it's just a matter of trimming off the excess. And I just clip these off because the wood is thin. Then just a, a fine sanding 
disc to take off the rough edges. This is the second coat of the uh, mahogany stain that I use and you can tell how dark this is going to be. Next I will apply uh, a few coats of tongue oil and that will seal the wood. Now I'm a long ways from that. That won't occur until the planking on all the ship is completed. Back is done. Now I can start planking on the main hull. I just put my first plank on. I'm not telling you to do it this way. I just struggle with planking and everyone talks about getting this first one on straight. Well this ship is bowed in every which way. So what I based it on was these two outside gun port windows. They looked to me like they were at the same spot. I made a straight line from there all the way to this point and I like that being a place where it starts. Now I will have to put a real small piece in right underneath this little deck piece. After I did the thread I put in these push pins so that I would have something to push downward on just slightly. And then after I put the plank in place, and you can see it right there, then I use this painter's tape to kind of hold it in place. I did bend this plank slightly with my uh, bending plank bender, although my plank bender quit working, so this is just a basically a soldering iron, or I think this is a wood burning tool. It does the same thing. So that's what I did all down the line. And again, I will mention the reason I stain underneath is if there's a slight error, you won't see it. And I pre stain my planks because if you get glue on them and then try and stain, the stain will not penetrate the wood. And I've had great success doing it this way. Ran this past just a little bit, and what I'll do eventually is trim that off so it covers this back edge. As I'm planking, I identify the drain ports and then I'll clean them out better after the glue is dried for at least 24 hours. I am using wood glue on this. So as an example, here's one of the ports. So I just put some pencil marks. This plank will go in here and see it would cover it. I would never find it. So after I put the plank on, then I'll poke a, uh, a hole in it after it's dried for maybe a half hour or so. And then I'll clean it up later. And on this particular level, I had to mark two. Here's another example where it's marked, the plank is dried enough that I can poke a hole in it and know where that drain port is. I've also continued to use the painter's tape to hold the planks in place, and um, it's worked pretty well. What I do is I'll take one, and I'll take my hand and kind of force that plank upward. As I do that, I'll place the, the tape below it and then I'll take my fingernail and kind of push upward and make that little seam there as I'm pushing up. I'm trying to do this while filming and this is already glued in place obviously. But you get the idea of what, how I'm holding that up and then I push the tape in place, let it sit on for about 15 minutes to a half hour and then I carefully can take it off. Half hour might be better, especially if you're doing a curve. I'm also using the push pins and they somewhat work better because you can actually push it towards the other plank and down. You just don't want to put a hole in a plank that's already your final layer. But the under layer it won't hurt it a bit so I'm using both. I have been bending these with the, the uh, plank bender or heating them up slightly but they're very thin. You could probably bend them without uh, heating them up. As I've said before, I'm not an expert in planking, so I'm just explaining what I'm doing with no particular rhyme or reason. If I look at the instructions, it shows where you work your way down, and then there's a point where you start something kind of where it flattens out on the bottom of the ship. And it shows them just a straight edge across here. So I'm to that point, I think I'll, I'll do that, but I eventually I will alternate. 
directions, but to start with, I've got to decide where this one is going to be. What I've done is from the, what is this, the keel, I think, I've measured out two inches all the way down, and it kind of give me, gives me a straight line. You can see that black line that I've made. And I've got the correct angle cut on this plank. And I'm going to glue this one as a starter point to go back towards the keel and then alternate going back so I can get over here to the side of the ship. So that's my thinking. That's what I'm going to try and do. We'll see how it turns out. I've also begun to taper in a few places. You can see this tapers there. It gets wider and then when I get to the other end I tapered it down again. And that's because these will kind of buckle if you don't keep up with it. Now I know there is a way you can make some sort of a pattern and pre-cut everything exactly but I don't have that talent and that's why I'm building a pirate ship so it can have a few imperfections. I have the preliminary planking done on the lower part of the ship. I'm going to do extra staining and some more work on it, but it's done, so now I don't have to turn the ship upside down anymore. And before I can complete this top part, the very upper deck, and then the captain's quarters down below, I'm actually wanting to finish that work. I have to do the lighting, and there's some framework, and that got a little confusing. After cutting all the J parts out, and then I went ahead and just numbered them on this piece of paper and said how many are, there are of each, because some of them have two. This is an example where I get confused with the instructions because they change the angle of the photograph. So they start front to back, and then it goes left to right, and then it goes back to front to back. So what I've done is I've put this lattice work together, which is the, the ceiling support for the captain's quarters or above the captain's quarters. This would be the rear of the ship and this does have kind of a, a bow to it and I've you know put the part, part numbers there's J1, 2, 3 and so on. The only parts I'm going to leave out are J9 because it goes at the very back and doesn't have any notches in it so it just I'll figure out where it glues on after I have everything glued together. And the other is this J8. And again, it doesn't have any grooves. It just uh, fits in there somehow, so we'll see. And then the two outside pieces, and notice the angle cut. So I'm guessing that's the corner inside the captain's quarters up on the roof line. So let me, uh, I'm going to get this glued up, and then I'll insert it in the ship and adjust accordingly. This is one of the panels that go on the back of the ship and I'm going to gold leaf. There's a raised pattern so I put the uh, the metal leaf adhesive just on the raised part of the panel. This is the gold leaf and this material is so light and so hard to work with. What I've been able to do a little better is take this and then just drop it down on the gold leaf and this is 24 karat gold leaf I can take a very soft brush and brush off the excess now this wood has like a um, etching to it so it kind of wants to go into those crevices and it will a little bit but you can brush it out and then after it dries completely I'll I'll brush it a little more. I got an extra piece of gold there. So there it is. Now this particular panel goes on the inside of the ship. There's already a one on the outside of the ship that I've already put in place. Here are those two panels glued in place and you can also see the furniture that comes with the kit and I put that together not without complications I either broke one of the table legs or it flipped and I lost it and so I had to make a replacement leg Let me show you that so there's one ugly leg let's see where is it it's that one right there 
So I had to make a leg that doesn't really match, but I'll face it away. I also broke one of the arms on the chair slightly and just put a small piece of wood on top that matches pretty well. And the cabinet, I added a piece of wood to the front just to make it more stable. And I'm thinking about painting these etchings in gold. I won't use the, uh, the glue technique with the 24 karat gold because these are etched in. They're not raised, so it doesn't work as well. I'm just about finished with all of this. And then I'll be able to put the uppermost deck on top of this. I'm getting very close to being able to put on this uh, upper deck portion. I'm going to have to uh, wait for some wires to dry so that they won't stick up. And you can see I've put in place uh, most of the things that will go down here. I've added some of my own. You might notice there's a treasure chest full of gold coins right there. I put some items on the table. There's some rum bottles and some jewels. And they actually look better in real life than they do on the camera, at least from this vantage point. And, oh, the one thing I had mentioned earlier, there's a photograph of a painting that I actually painted many years ago. One error that I made that I can help you avoid is I did not, let me put this where it's a little clearer, when I ran the lighting for the captain's quarters, I did not pre-build the lanterns on them. I ran the light bulb without the lantern. Well, once it's all wired, you can't put the lantern together. So you need to make sure you pre-wire those before you put them into a place. Uh, you know, I could have cut the wire and then put the lantern in place. But I decided to just let it go because they could be candles and you can see I put four of them behind these windows and they do kind of look like candles. And because it's so far in the captain's quarters I decided to not worry about it. And same thing with inside and I don't know if I can get it to focus. There are some deep inside the captain's quarters and I'm just hoping they look like candles. Now the ones in the back windows I had pre-wired and those are the lanterns. In one of the earlier segments I had mentioned how how fragile this piece was and there's a little piece that wasn't very wide, maybe a half inch, it came down into this area uh, into this area and I just mentioned that it was real fragile, well I did end up breaking it but when you plank it back together, the planks hold it all together. Now, mine, I must have something off a little bit because actually this is in a little bit. You can see this little hollow spot. That's where it broke. And I will just fill that in with either wood putty or just a, uh, a piece of planking will work. So it's not going to look bad. But those things happen and you just work through them. Same thing with this piece. I wasn't real happy with how... I got it on there to fit. I'll do some sanding and some covering. Even though I said I was done planking, I still have quite a bit to do on the inside, for example, of this, uh, the inside of the hall here. All that has to be planked. There'll be a few places where I'll just add some planking. Now you can start to see the two tones that I'm going for. This is the dark mahogany, and then this is the natural walnut with just a coat of tongue oil on it. Closer to the end of the build, I'll put another layer of tongue oil on this and the outside will also get tongue oil. That's it for part 11 of the Black Pearl. As always, thanks for watching.